Hello and welcome. You are watching Impact Television, a part of the media ministry from Forgiven Church located in Bluffton and Fort Wayne, Indiana. We pray that you would have an open mind and ears to hear what God would say to you today. So let's dive right in to one of Pastor Scott's or Pastor Michelle's previous teachings taught at Forgiven Church. Enjoy. Good to see you guys here at Forgiven Church. Are you guys glad that you're forgiven? I tell you, I'm glad I'm forgiven. I'm glad I don't have to earn it. Amen. That is so good. I'm glad I don't have to earn it anymore. I praise the Lord that I, I live in a new, better covenant. Amen. That, I, that I live in the New Testament, not the Old Testament. Yeah, right. And, uh, man, it sure, uh, sure is good when the, the more you get revelation on, on this new covenant that we have and, and that forgiveness has already been offered to us and that we don't need to do all these things but believe uh, and we're good with God, amen? I mean, that, that's just absolutely awesome. But, but we also know this, that when we realize that we're forgiven and we're now a part of the family of God or the army of God or whatever you want to call it, the kingdom of God, you've gone from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. How many of you guys know then, then there's things that God wants us to do? Amen. But see, a lot of people, they have the wrong attitude when it comes to the body of Christ or church or whatever it is. And we have talked about this over the last few weeks that when we come together, um, whether it's corporately here or whatever event that we're doing, we need to make sure that we always go home satisfied. Right. We don't want to sit there and go and go, but that was a waste of time. OK, I don't want to go to church and make sure that, and say that that was a waste of time. Right. right. They want to think that's a waste of time because they not amen and over there. Right. But I want to make sure that when I go to church or wherever I go, that I leave and something happens. Right. right. That I was glad that I went there. Yeah. Right. You know, then the Bible say, boy, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah. Right. They were. Yeah. I will pray. Yeah. I get to go again because every time I go, something's happening. Yeah. I leave different. I leave changed. I leave challenged. Maybe I leave. Maybe I, I, I left with my toes stepped on, but I left with something happening, right? And, and I'm telling you, there are so many people in the body of Christ that they go to church and they gripe and they complain. And I was just, you know, same old, same old. What'd you learn? I don't know. You know, they did a skit. Skit was good. What'd the pastor talk about? What life changing? Well, man, it was, I think he talked about Jesus sometime in, during his message, somewhere around there. And yeah, it was, yeah, something, but it was, you know, and I'm telling you, there are people that, that they do not have the right attitude when it comes to the body of Christ. And, and we've been talking about this, we started about this last week, that a lot of people have an attitude of being a servant and not an attitude of being a son, right? So go with me again to Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Can I just agree with you that we'll have ears to hear and hearts to receive Amen. today? Yeah. Today? Okay, good. Shove your neighbor. Say you need to receive in Jesus' name. There you go. There you go. See, Judy's so nice, she doesn't whap you upside the back of the head. She... <laughs> Hebrews chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, it says this. Therefore, holy brothers, and we know we talking to the sisters too, right? Yeah. Right, so don't you ladies be checking out, Amen. right? Therefore, holy brothers who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses. Just as the builder of the house has greater honor than the house itself, for every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a what? Servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be said in the future, but Christ is faithful as a son over God's house, and we are his house if we hold on to our courage and the hope of which we boast, right? So we both know, or we both know, we all know, uh, if you, especially if you're here last week, that both servants and sons 
serve, but the main difference between a servant and a son is what? Okay. We had a lot of different, okay, yeah, where your heart is, your attitude, whatever, right? That is the key thing determining do you have an attitude of a servant or do you have an attitude of a son? See, we talked about this last week also that a person who has an attitude of a servant is one who goes and looks for a church and what can the church do for me? These are church hoppers. And they go to a church until they're not satisfied anymore, until they're not doing what makes me happy anymore. And these are usually people who are not involved. They're not doing this. They're not doing that. They just hop them from church to church to church, and they go to the next best thing. And they say, well, that's just what we do. See, see, Christians, we just go to church on Sundays because that's what we do. No, see, see servants are doers, but sons understand that they are the church. We don't do church. We are the church. Amen. See, and if you understand that we are the church, then you're going to function in a different way. Does that make sense to everybody? See, a lot of people, they go to church and do stuff instead of realizing, no, you are the church. And because you are the church, now these things ought to be automatically happening. It's not just going through the motions and going through the routine if you're here with me, okay? So we know uh, if you were here last week, I'm going to talk about some different characteristics between sons and servants, okay? Now, if you see in one of these areas that you might have that characteristic of a servant, well, praise the Lord, you can have an attitude adjustment, Amen. right? <laughs> right? And become a son. Amen. Right? Is, that, is that right? Is that, is, that, is that how you guys do it? Around the world. Oh, around the world. Yeah. Right, is that how it is? <laughs> All right, you got you to gotta, you gotta have the swagger, right? So... We need to understand you can go from a servant to a son Amen. by just having an attitude adjustment. Now, what's great about messages like this is that helps us stay focused. It helps us really understand why are we doing what we're doing. Okay, are you, are you with me? Ephesians chapter 4, let's go over here. Ephesians chapter 4. And these are some scriptures we've gone over before over the last several weeks. But there are certain things I want to point out in some of these scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, it says this. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people, what? For works of service, right? That means we all need to work, yeah. right? So shove your neighbor and say, are you doing something for Jesus? You need to be doing something for Jesus, right? And showing up don't mean you're doing something for Jesus, right? Works of service. Why, right? So that the body of Christ may be what? Built up, right? Built up until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So, what here is the difference between a son and a servant? Well, when we understand that we are a son, a son understands that he's an heir. Amen. Right? A servant understands that they're a hireling. Yeah. And they only do what is important to them. Yeah. See, so a servant will come to church and do church. Because it's about them, they're going to do their little quota, I'm going to do whatever is minimal to get the job done to say I'm apart, okay? But they don't understand that a son or an heir looks at people and looks at what they do for building the family or building the church. A son will build, a servant will just simply serve. See, when you come to, to church and you are serving, is your attitude, what I am doing, is it building other people up? Yeah. Is it for their benefit or is it for my benefit? See, anybody can teach Sunday school. Seriously, anybody can teach Sunday school. You can, you can get an outline and teach Sunday. You can be saved a month and teach Sunday school. 
Here's an outline teach Sunday school. Okay. But see, there are some people that are out there that they want to teach Sunday school because they want everybody to know how much they know. And I want to show you how I've been studying the Greek and the Hebrew and what it's done in my life. And I know none of you study Greek and Hebrew, but let me just show you what I know. And their whole goal is to impress everybody out there that they're supposed to be teaching. See, that's what a servant's going to do. A son is not going to have an attitude that it's about me. A son's going to say, well, in the Greek and the Hebrew that I've learned, what can I do to instill that into people so they are built up? Yeah. Do, you, do you see the difference? When, 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 when we're greeting at the door, how are we greeting at the door? Are we greeting at the door like a servant? Well, this is just what I do. It's the criteria. It's the easiest thing to do in the church. <laughs> I think, <laughs> but your attitude's really not there. You're not looking at, not on purpose looking at people saying, oh, they, they're coming in, they're looking a little downcast. How can I put a smile on their face yeah. mm -hmm. and build them up? See, some people, if they're, if they're just greeters at the door, they're just going to go through the motion. I'm going to shake your hand, smile. Here's your seat, sit down. Mm -hmm. Go through the motions, and you just like, really? But someone who is a son will look at the interest of others and know that they're the reason why I'm here. Yeah. To build them up, because see, if I build them up, it makes the house and the family stronger. Amen. And that's what we're supposed to be doing, yeah. making the family stronger. Amen. Why do you do what you do here? Well, because we have to. Because if you go to Forgiven Church, you better serve. Yeah. And if you don't, Pastor will be calling you. Why aren't you serving? Why aren't you serving? Why aren't you serving? <laughs> so you might as well just do something. Well, it's, yeah, we're supposed to serve. Yeah. Amen. And there's reasons why we serve. Because if you don't, you'll get one of them, you know, when, when, when things don't move. They, Thank you. I wanted them to think for a minute, but there's your answer. They get stagnant. <laughs> they get stagnant. Stagnant things start to stink, right? right yeah. And they get all gripey, and they're the ones with the attitude, and you get all religious <laughs> looks on their faces and want to tell you what needs to be done and everything else. Yet they, you, know, you ain't got a clue what's going on. See, certain servants have that kind of attitude. It's all about them. Yeah. What I like, what I don't like. It's all about me. Well, it's not all about you anymore. It's about him and what he wants and about everybody else. Because, see, remember, if we went through the whole list of things in, in the order of priorities, we're last on the list. Do you remember that? We're last on the list when it comes to order of priorities. So it's very important that we see the difference here because if I'm not building you up, then I'm not doing my job. And... As a minister, the last thing I want is for people to go out and say, well, I got nothing. I, I, I hope nobody goes out there like that. See, and I've taught this message before. It was like four years ago I taught this message again. See, and you know what a servant's going to do? A servant's going to go, wow, pastor taught that like four years ago. I'll just check out. I already know all this. I don't need it. I don't hear anything. No, a son's going to be like, give me a refresher. Make sure I'm staying on track. Amen. Make sure I got ownership in this thing. Yeah. Right? Because an ownership is, or an heir has ownership, right. right, in this whole entire thing. So it's very, very important. So go with me to Luke chapter 16. So the difference, for, so if you want to talk about points that we're going through, so the first point is what a son will build, a servant will just serve, right? Number two, Luke chapter 16, a son holds the father's heart, and the success of the father's work as their own. A son will have the father's heart and the success of the father's heart as their own. Luke 16 verse 10 says this, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with very much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with very much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, 
Who will give you property of your own? See, that applies all the way around. See, when you come here, well, we'll, we'll just use Jesus as a prime example. Jesus was the Son of God. He's not the only Son of God now, but he was the firstborn. But do you notice his attitude was the success of the Father's plan? Even when he didn't like what he had to do. See, there's some people that go to church and do church, and then when something's asked of them, well, I'll go if I like it or if I can just put up with it or whatever, but if I don't like it, I'm not going to do it or I'm not going to be poor or I'm not going to make time for it. That shows the difference between a son and a servant. A son will be, come hell or high water, I'm going to be there to get the job done. I'm going to do all I can to help accomplish the vision that the Father has given. See, and some people say, I'm not, no, I'm not going to, no, 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 no. They already require too much the way it is. I'm not going to go do something else. I mean, goodness gracious, all you guys ever do is church. You don't do it, all your life is, is church. And people think that's a bad thing. See, Jesus didn't, didn't do that when the Father said, we got to fix this thing. I got a plan, and there's a mess. And I, we got to fix this thing. And you know what Jesus did? He volunteered. He said, I'll go. I'll do it. I'll fix the mess. I'm not going to like what I got to do, but I'll do it because it's about your plan. Yeah. And I want to be a part of your plan. Yeah. See, I know some people, they struggle with that. Well, he was God, and he was this, and the three in one, and this. Do you know Jesus at any time could have gone off the cross? That's why the Bible says that. At any time, he could have called for legion and angels and pulled him off, and he would have been fine. He would have said, forget you all. But he said, man, not my will, but your will be done. See, that's what a, son, that's what a son's going to say. Not my will, but your will be done. Yeah, but I got to mow the lawn! Yeah, well... Yeah, but I gotta do this. Yeah, but I gotta do that. And they're always so busy, full of excuses yeah. of why the will doesn't get done. And see, a son will have the father's heart and plan and want to do all they can to help accomplish that plan. And they will realize that that plan is not just, it, that plan includes them, yeah, right. if that makes any sense. Because, see, some people. They want to be a part of something for just them. They want to promote themselves. They want to, you know, make themselves go further along, but they don't care about what happens to everything else, as long as I'm promoted and it's better for me. That's what a servant does, yeah. and not a son. It's very important. We should always want to help and achieve the goals. See, some people have got to have the understanding that everything that we do here, it's not my ministry, it's our ministry, or it's the ministry. Do you follow me? See, see, if you start seeing me, my, and I, that's dangerous. It's about us, we, and everything. That's that whole language thing. And see, a lot of people, well, it's about my ministry, it's about my this, and it's about my... I mean, see, some people take such ownership in their area of serving, it's a little too possessive. Yeah. Well, it's not your ministry, it's a part of the ministry in general. Okay. Now, you want to take ownership, but not to the point of where it's all about you. Yeah. And look at me. That, that's totally wrong. We, haven't we said this about... We even sing about it, more of you, less of me. Man, if there's anything that people see in me, I want it to be Jesus. I, you don't want to see me. I'm not, me's not very good. Is, it, is that even right? Can I say that? Not very good, not nice. Is that, is that grammatically correct, teacher? I don't know. I, I just, I've never been gifted in that area. I'm kind of like Paul. I'm not eloquent in speech. I don't care. I'm not. I'm just going to let it rip. Hopefully y'all figure it out. Hopefully y'all got that gift of interpretation and you can get it. I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to go to those big words. I, I, got, I got 
too many other things to do but to get some big words to try and impress, impress people who really don't care. I'd rather have a demonstration of power in people's lives being changed than, boy, did you hear the words that the pastor said? It was so eloquent. It was so good. So number one is what? Need to what? Sons build. Servants just serve. Number two is what? Sons have the father's heart. Right. And servants don't. It's about the father and it's about the big plan. Not just all about me. Right? So go with me to John chapter 10. Let's look at another thing here. Point number three. John chapter 10 Point number three is that sons are always family-oriented. Servants are always issue-oriented. Let me say that again. Sons are always family-oriented. Servants are always issue-oriented. John chapter 10 says this, verse 12. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Right? Go back to verse 12. Verse 12, or, well, you can see it up there, but it says this. It says, the hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. Everybody say owns. owns. Okay, now this is, of course, talking about leadership here, but it's all the same attitude. Do you have ownership or are you just a servant? See, if you don't have ownership, you will leave whenever something doesn't go your way or something you don't like. You'll have your undies in a bunch like we talked about last week. And you'll go somewhere else and just whatever it is. It's sad. But people hop from church to church to church to church to church to church and they never ever have ownership. They never understand that God wants you to take ownership where you're at. And when you have ownership, whenever trials come, you don't quit. Amen. See, I remember way back when, some of you were here with us back, back when, when, when we used to, our ministry used to be hubbed in Decatur. Really? It did? Yeah, I did. We used to have a, our... See, the church is, is people. It's not a building. Right? right. right? It's people. It's family. It's, this, it's us. It's kind of like our sign outside, right? Church is not religion, denominations, or steeple. It's what? It's people. So wherever the hub meets is wherever we have church, wherever it is. Well, well we had a, a, a building. Our hub was over there, and then our hub ended up moving over here. Well, some people didn't like that, and some people started leaving. And people who could have been a part and, and had sonship and ownership would have stayed. But we had people come up to us and say this. They said, well, I'm not going down if the Titanic's going down. I might as well jump ship while I can and be safe. Jack, we still floating. We still going. We still saving souls. And these people that have had these attitudes of, 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 a, of a servant, I've heard lots of stories of turmoil that's been happening in their lives. Because they, didn't, they weren't willing to go through it. And they don't understand if you stay together, you stick together, you're stronger. But when a little trial, a real trial comes, all of a sudden these little sparks and people just start going all over the place. See, owners don't quit when it gets tough. You press through. You might have to make some modifications and some changes, but man, you keep pressing through. But see, people who, who don't have ownership, they scatter. And see, here he's talking about leadership, is he not? Look at the, look, look at the other translations. The New Living Translation, it says this. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him, and he, is, and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for money and doesn't really care about the sheep. Okay? 
which means it's all about what? Them. Is it good for me? Is it benefit me? If not, I'm not going to do nothing. And see, I know this is talking about leadership, but it flows all the way down. It does. And, and we know people in the pulpit, behind the pulpit, that have said, I can't wait till I get out of the ministry. And, and they're, they're counting down the years till they can retire. Man, five more years and I can get out of this hellhole. Praise the Lord. Five more years, five more years of putting up with the people. Oh, man, I can't quit now because then, you know, I can't collect their retirement like I need to. And I got to keep that retirement pension fund going. Can't quit, man. Got to keep going. Gosh, ministry would be great if it wasn't for the people. Wow. All people behind the pulpit don't say things like that. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> they do, trust me. Yeah. And it's sad. And see, here you understand when it gets... What ha and, and, and that's why a lot of them jump ship and jump churches. Do you, do, you, do you notice that a lot of churches, the average time that they have their pastors like four years? Yeah. Yep. Some will go six. But that's a long time for a lot of churches to have a pastor for six years. Man, we're breaking records, huh? We we're here, what, 14 almost? Hallelujah. Do you know why? Because I'm telling you, there are times, I'll, I'll confess for you, I'll be real with you. There are times we want to say, you guys can just take a hike. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. Boy, I sure wish I could be in the ministry with all the, it's just a bunch of roses and glamour and it's great. And there's no trials. <laughs> it's never been harder. I've never been stabbed more in the back than when I do stuff for people. My wife and I, we, we've had the discussions. I'm sorry, but just, I'm going to agree with you. We've had the discussions like, is it worth it? Can we take one more knife in the back? Can we have one more person that said they were going to do this and not do it again? Can we have one more person that we've poured our lives and hours and, and ministry into it and just turn around and throw us away like we're a piece of garbage? Yeah. After we've sacrificed our time with our kids and our time with this and we left and they, they don't know what we've done for them and they just, who cares? You've really thought that? Yeah. I'm sorry, but yeah. But you know what keeps us going? Man, we got too much invested in this thing. Yeah, we got ownership in this thing. Amen. Come hell or high water, we're going to make sure this thing comes to pass, man. Amen. We're not going to scatter when it gets tough because there's been times it's been tough. Yeah. There's been times when we haven't taken a salary because it's been so tight and so tough. But we said, God, I don't know how you knew, but you can make a way. And every single time, he makes a way. I'm telling you, we could have run. There's been times we could have run. But we didn't. And I'm not saying this to toot my horn. Please, trust me, I'm not saying this. I'm just telling you, I understand what's going on here. That there are people that are sticking it out, not because of everybody else, but just for them. They, they can't, well, I'm telling you, they will be retiring a week after that, that, that date's there. They will be retiring and getting out of it. And they can't wait. And that's not good. Or when a trial happens here, they, they go to their board, put me in a different church. I don't want to deal with these stuff no more. It happens all over the body of Christ. It's very, very, very sad. So, are, are y'all okay with that? All right, okay, is, is this true? Is this true? Okay, point number four. I'm not going to go into any scripture because I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier and my time is already going down. But point number four was, was the difference between a son and a servant is their vocabulary. Right? The vocabulary, a son will say, we'll talk about us, right? We are us, right? A servant's going to say me, mine, they, them. Right? Pastors. Look at that. Look, they made another change. <laughs> Look at them. Wonder what they're going to change next. I don't know who they think they are. They didn't consult me on the change. <laughs> There's a reason why. <laughs> if you wonder why we didn't, there's probably a reason why. And then there's some people that are wholly, totally have a sonship attitude. They're like, hey, man, if pastor thinks they need me to change, let's go for this thing, man. Let's do this thing. Amen. 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 Let's do it. Let's run this thing, man. Let's do it. 
pastors haven't led us astray yet. Yeah. We might as well just keep trusting them. Yeah. Instead of, I don't like the change. I don't like that, Brian. Yeah, Brian guy. I like Brad. Brad's conservative looking. <laughs> Brad has no pierced ears, no tattoos. He's and that's the kind of youth we really want to attract. <laughs> The ones that are perfect. Can you imagine what kind of, Can you hear him? Look at him now. Can you imagine the ones Brian might bring in? Some of those hair like this. Some might come in with more piercings than him. More tattoos than him. Probably coming in smelling like some cigarettes. Now, I'm not saying Brian smokes there. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, all right? I'm just, you know? And you'll have some people, I don't like the change. I love Brad. But Brad's good with it. If Brad's good with it, shut up. We didn't ask your opinion. Well, I'm giving. I'm not asking it. Sometimes we don't care what you think. Is that too real? I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not. I, I lied. Forgive me. I'm sorry. I, I just. Thank you. Thanks for the permission. Praise there. I got two in agreement. I can just. You all strap in, and I'm about to get heavy, man. All right. <laughs> Very important. What kind of attitude do you have? What are you saying? It's about us. It's about we. It's about this. It's about that. You know, when 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 we have ownership in the house, if if if. if if, if the church is being attacked, then we're under attack. Yeah, right. We get ownership in this thing, right? We, we understand if, if for whatever reason the finances are tight, then it's tight for all of us. It's not just, well, I wonder how pastor's going to pull this one out. Because yeah. you really, you guys know it's not on our shoulders to, to carry the burden. Right. It's actually, it's a, he's the one that's to carry the burden, but it, he's calling us all to do our job. Right? Well, I better do my part. I probably better tithe. I probably ought to give offerings. I probably ought to do when God speaks to me to give. I probably better be obedient in that stuff. Yeah. Better do my part. Not like, well, I don't have to. They do. They, they, you know, when you keep saying it's everybody else's but mine, that's not ownership. Uh-huh. That is not ownership. You know, I'll, 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 I'll even talk about the North Church. The North Church. Well, that, you know, that, that's just pastor's biz. God spoke to pastors. Well, you know what? If he speaks to me, it usually includes all of us. Amen. It really does. And I did, I did, I, I did say this. Well, you said this, I know you said this. You said, well, we don't have to go up there and help. Because we do enough down here the way it is. Yeah, but we could use your help up there. Because they need some instruction. Yeah, but then I might miss the buffet. <laughs> Sorry. Seriously. And I did say that now, and I've, I've been bit in the rear about that. <laughs> what did he just say? <laughs> you, you ever heard that term, it came and bit you back in the yeah. behind? <laughs> he, the nice way he said it, he, right? <laughs> I did, I said that. And it's biting me now. Well, you didn't say we had to do a hip. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't think I'd have to. I think if you had the right attitude, you would have just gone. <laughs> What's the next point? <laughs> sorry. <sighs> Getting hot and sweaty in here. <sighs> it's a we thing. It's an us thing. Not a you with them and that, right? It's not a me. It's a we. Right? Amen. Preach it, Pastor. Come on. There we go. Very good. How's your language? You'll be able to tell. And see, and see, even, and see the thing about it, you'll even be able to tell how your language is by how you associate. See, because like I say, we, we've, I know this would be a shock to you, but we've had people leave our church not happy. I mean, I, I mean, and it's usually when we're doing our job. Like, dude, you really got to quit doing that. Bible says, don't do this. And they gave us permission to get in their business if they were doing that. And they leave. 
you know and the thing about it is in their Facebook well some of y'all on Facebook they, they know y'all friends on Facebook and so you know what happens is, is you're like haven't seen you for a few weeks what, what's going on and they decide to fill you in pastor this and pastor that and better this and better this and, and, and the same people that say they love us they're for us is out there hanging out with these people griping and talking behind their back well issues shit who you looking at Merlin <laughs> I was right what's that I thought, he, I thought he was staring one of you guys down whatever it was okay I thought he was trying to say see he's talking about you no he's like, I'm just kidding I'm just kidding but you know and that's what they'll do they'll sit there and, say, and they'll sit there and say well we're still friends it's between you and them it's not between us and they'll go hang out with them go party with them go do whatever they want to do with them and sit there and let them talk about me and my wife well, I, I, yeah, I understand. I understand. But that's just between you and pastor. So we can still, I'm still good with you. I'm still good with them. Can I tell you something? If you're good with us, you're not going to be good with them. Right. Yeah. I'm not telling you to hate them and blow that. But I'm just telling you, man, sometimes you've got to make up your mind. You've got to draw a line in the sand. Yeah. Right. Because, see, there's something about being a part of the family. Right. Yeah. See, you mess with daddy, yo. Uh -uh. You're going to be messing with kiddo. You want to talk some smack? Yeah. Right? I mean, that's the way it should be. Yeah. Instead of using this, you well, that's just the way people are. They're just carnal. That's just the way they are. Well, yeah, but they sat in our church for four or five years and learned. That's not the way you're supposed to be. Yeah. But when they have an attitude because you don't want to draw a line in the sand and you don't want to offend anybody, and, well, God bless them. We'll just all should I just try to win them over by that. Well, who's it about? Yeah. Who's it really about? So we gotta understand we gotta have the right vocabulary. Is that too real for everybody? No. Right, that's that's just well, that's just the way it is. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> we gotta have the right vocabulary, right? So watch your language, right? And I'm talking about your we us, that's not your all your other language. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can fix that too. Yeah, that should be fixed anyways. <laughs> right. Kind of hard to blank, they blank, blank, bless God, right? And you say you're a son of the king, right? Child of the king, right? All right. Genesis chapter 19, go over there. Look at another. We've got a couple more here for you. You guys, is this okay if I give you a couple more? <clears throat> a servant says, Amen. <laughs> Amen. Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. What did I say? Okay. It's 9. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Still love me. I'm sorry. I'm not perfect. I know y'all think I am, but I'm not. I'm sorry. All right. No, we don't. We've been here long enough. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, as long as you're not out there telling everybody, all right? Kind of going into my next point here. Genesis chapter 9, verse 18 says this. You, you guys remember Noah? Yeah. Right, right. Noah and his sons, here it is. The sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These were the three sons of Noah. From them came the people who were scattered over the earth. Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. So he was naked. <laughs> right? He was in his birthday suit. Okay? Okay. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness and told his two brothers. So he went out and just told everybody the mistake the father done. Yeah. You know what pastor said? They call people stupid at church today. I can't believe they call people stupid at church today. And I didn't. I called you stupid. I didn't call everybody stupid. No, I was... I just, yeah, 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 you tell them, call there you go, and that's what they do. One little thing they don't like, whether it's sin or not sin, but even if it does sin, they go tell everybody. Yeah, right. yeah. Now, granted, here everybody was just two people, but they went and told everybody, yeah. right? And he says this, Ham the father of Canaan saw his father's nakedness and told his two brothers outside, but Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders then they walked in backwards and covered their father's what? Nakedness. Their faces were turned the other way so that they would not see their father's nakedness. Do you see what they did? 
they honored and respected their father. Now here at FC, I'm the father of the house. And I'm here to tell you, I am not perfect, nor is my wife. We will make mistakes every now and then, okay? But I, I tell you, we, we do not habitually make mistakes. We do make mistakes every now and then. Sometimes we make a wrong decision. Sometimes we'll, we'll buy something maybe we shouldn't have bought. I don't know. Spend an extra 50 bucks on something we shouldn't have bought. I don't know. Nothing to get uptight about. But people do. And then they want to just go talk. <laughs> See, someone who is a son is going to cover the leadership. They're not going to want to expose. But see, people who, who understand it's, or they think it's all about them, they will cut people down to try to build themselves up. You know, we've all been there. We've all done that. We've all been insecure in some way, shape, or form. And we figured if we cut them down and bring them down to our level, it'll make us just look better. And see, that's what servants do. They expose the wrongdoings of the fathers. Now, I'm not saying that, that, that if there's rampant sin going on, it doesn't get exposed. It should get exposed, yeah. right? right? But I'm saying if you make a simple mistake, if you're supposed to order blue carpet and it came in pink on accident, well, get over it, yeah. all right? It's nothing to go have a hissy about, yeah. right? But some people do. They, they make a mistake. Oh, I didn't like that. Or, or they'll talk behind pastor's back. You know, I've been noticing. Have you been noticing too? I bet you've been noticing what I've been noticing. See, they made this decision, and I've been noticing some change. How about you? You've been noticing some change in this rich? Yeah, so you know anybody else has been noticing the change? Oh, she has too. Oh, okay. All right. That's why she doesn't want to look me in the face, huh? Because she just... Uh, uh. Yet the change wasn't sin. And even if it was a sin... And do you notice... Do you think Noah went and got trashed on purpose? That's not a trick question. He, he, he didn't go out and say, it's been a long voyage. I can't wait till these grapes are ripe, baby, because I need a drink. He didn't go out and get sloshed on purpose. He got sloshed on, that must have been some good wine. I'm telling you. And he did. He, he got sloshed, passed out, and one person came in, one son came in as an attitude of a servant, and talked about dad, mocked dad, look, he's naked, blah, 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 blah. Guess what? Look, look what I'm telling you. I'm the first one to let you know the good gossip going around. And the other one, like, hey, we don't hear it. We don't hear it. We don't even want to look upon it. Because let me tell you something that I know about dad is, man, he's never led us astray. Or, or, or even when he made a mistake, it wasn't on purpose. So we're just not going to give in to this. And we're just going to know that we think better about dad than you do. So, uh, right? See, an attitude of a son is going to do that when it comes to ownership in the house. Because the last thing you want to do is take out the top. Because, see, if you take out the top, it usually will make the whole thing crumble. Yeah. You, know, you know that, right? Yeah. That's why... That's why Pastors and people in ministry have a lot of pressures that other people don't have because if the devil can take out the top, it'll scatter the sheep, which is really, really dangerous. And that's why it's important that you pray for your pastors and you love your pastors and you forgive your pastors when we make a mistake and you extend just as much grace to us as you want us to extend to you. Yeah. Oh, man, now, oh, that's a whole other sermon itself, but, you know, right, it's true. Yeah. Right? It's very important. How do we do I remember one time um, my wife and I were talking and and this was right after we like bought this property here and we were actually I think in the process of renovation here we weren't even in the doors yet here we were renovating things and do things out here and all of a sudden my wife got a phone call and she got a phone call about one of her best friends in Colorado who got in a car wreck and her daughter was killed and her son who had the permit is the one that got in the wreck so, so her son, who's got the permits driving, mom's in the front seat, daughter's in the back seat, and I think he turned out in front of a car or something like that, a truck or whatever it was, got broadsided, killed his sister, and mom is still not exactly the same today. Massive brain stuff happened with the hit and everything else. And so we're, we're it was on, a, was it a Saturday we got that phone call? So we're out here building stuff, doing stuff out here, 
And so my wife gets the phone call. I go out, and she's out in the parking lot. It's me and her out in the parking lot, and she's just crying. And she's, she's like, you know, almost hysterical kind of crying. And I'm there trying to comfort her. I'm trying to, I don't know, but, you know, me and my wife, just like a lot, sometimes we're kind of big with our hands. We talk with our hands. You know, is it, you know, some people do that, right, or whatever. Well, someone else that used to be a part of our church, used to be, key word, used to be a part of our church thought we were going to fight out in the parking lot. And went and told a bunch of people, the pastors are fighting out in the parking lot. Look what Pastor Scott did. He made, him, he made Pastor Michelle cry. <laughs> now, of course, right there at that moment, we didn't know that's what happened. But everybody else was assuming that because somebody didn't, didn't say, oh, Pastor Scott, well, he's not that stupid. <laughs> well, some people might think I am, but I'm just, I mean, <laughs> look, if I'm going to fight with my wife, it's not going to be out in the parking lot. <laughs> I got a little more sense than that. Give me some credit. Right? And, but seriously, that, that was the new rumor that went around. And we're out there, and, and, and out, and, you know, people, man, people coming in, coming out, and man, they, that's not going to be good for church etiquette and church promo and church whatever. And I was like, man, you, you don't have our heart. Why would you even say that about us anyways when you don't even know the situation? Yeah. Why would you open up your big mouth? Because it is big. Because you decided to tell everybody about something you had no clue about and you were so far off the track. And what it did is it went and it planted seeds in other people. As sad as it is, that's what happens. When you don't have the heart of your pastors or the heart of the Father, you'll talk about them. Or you'll let people talk about them or you'll talk about whatever else. Instead of going, no, 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 I don't want to hear that stuff. Or I ain't going to get into that stuff. See, just like, just like he did, he said, he said, you know, dad didn't get drunk on purpose. We, we, we ain't going to give in to this because we, we know that's not him. We, we know his heart. And it has been a long voyage for all of us. <laughs> all of us could have got sloshed last night probably. That's some pretty potent wine, right? I don't know what percentage it was, but it was probably a pretty high percentage of whatever it was on that. Okay, Let me, can, can I give you one more? Wow. Did I start later or am I just like, wait, okay, all right, last, I'm sorry, guys. Are you guys all still okay with me today? Yeah. Y- y'all still love me? Yeah. All right, all right. All right. I know some of you guys are like, oh, bathroom time, right? All right, just work with me. All right, I'll try not to make this one too long. Psalms 127. Psalms 127, verse 5. And of course, Three and four is talking about how sons are a heritage from the Lord. But Psalms 127 verse 5, it says this. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate. Right? He's talking about family. And he's talking about the father. And he says this, he goes, he goes, Son are, sons are a heritage from the Lord. Blessed is the man who's got a whole bunch of sons. And notice it says this. Notice, notice it's a we word or an all-inclusive word. Yeah. It says they will not be put to shame. They. Yeah. It doesn't say dad's going to be put to shame. It says they're not going to be put to shame because they're doing this thing together. Yeah. Right? So, so, so the last point on this is, is we got to see is that, that sons will defend the father. Or they'll defend the house. They're willing to fight for it if they have ownership. It's very important that they have ownership. See, some people, they'll let, they'll, they'll let the ship sink. Instead of tightening a bolt where there might be some loose, something water might be, instead of tightening that bolt, they'll just let that thing go down. Yeah. They're not going to do the extra work. They're not going to fight for it. You know, it's like we've talked about before, you know, uh, someone who's a greeter or an usher or whatever else, you know, that's a servant, they'll just do their job and only their job. They won't do over and above their job. They won't fight for it. They won't put extra effort into it. They won't put extra training in to get the job done. You know, so, and I've used this before, like, you know, when somebody goes walking down the aisle and there's sheep droppings, right? So, yeah. sheep, sheep, trash. Yeah. You bunch of sheep, right? Trash, you leave, you know, trash on the floor, you know, like a hanky on the ground, you know, or whatever, you know, or, or fingernail clippings, yeah. you know? I know, you think some people would have enough etiquette that you don't clip your nails during church, but some people, they just... They do that still, you know? Or they may not be clipping, but they're chewing. (laughs) 
See, and the people that do that stuff don't know they're chewing. But it's ended up on the floor, so there's sheep droppings down there. And, and someone who is a servant will go, well, I'm a greeter. I don't, I don't, I don't pick that stuff up. That's for the janitor. Right? Or they'll see a crumpled piece of paper over there. That's the janitor's job. It's not my job. I'm a servant. I just do what I'm called to do, and that's only what I'm called to do. What's a son going to do? Son's going to go pick it up and say, this is my house. Man, that looks stupid. That looks really bad. What if somebody else sees that? Man, that's going to look bad. Yeah. Attitude between a son and a servant is very, very important. And here, like I said, a son will fight for the father. See, I shouldn't have to go out there and fight all the battles myself. Well, they're talking about you. Well, I know they're talking about me because I'm the biggest one. I'm, I'm exposed. Yeah. I, I'm the one up front. You want to be up front? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. I hear the way they're talking about you. Ha! I don't want to hear that. You know what? You ought to be defending me. Amen. You shouldn't let them talk about me. You ought to be fighting for me. Amen. Man, my pastor's not like that. He ain't like that. What do you hear that? He ain't like that. Pastor Michelle ain't like that either. You better, you better, you better, you better quit talking about him. You go, you go to spirit slap going to jump all over you. <laughs> See, when you have an attitude of ownership, and you and you understand, you will fight. You know, I, I've used, I've told you guys this before. Um, you guys know our trustees. So, I mean, you may don't know them all personally, but put our, put treasure our trustees up there. You get our trustees, Pastor Low, Pastor Godot, Pastor Steve Shank, right? These are our trustees. See, you talk smack about them, you've got to fight in your hands for me. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I would fight for you, yeah, but you don't understand. I'm in covenant with them too. Yeah. And see, they speak into me and my wife. They speak into our lives. Yeah. They've made a covenant with us. Yeah. They said, we're going to do all we can to help you and help your people and to help make the ministry successful. God has connected us together, connected our hearts together, done things together. These guys, and, and, and don't take this wrong, but these guys have done things for us none of you guys have done. None of you have done. When our son Josh was in the hospital, Pastor Godot called from California, talked to him. Pastor Lowe came, came, came down, drove a couple hours and spent time in the hospital with him. Pastor Steve called him. I'm from call, I mean, calling. And, they, and, and these guys, they're busy. They don't call everybody. Even Pastor Godot. I mean, I mean, we have all their cell phone numbers directly, the cell phone in their car, cell phone in their house, cell phone in this. They, they don't, trust me, they don't call everybody, but see, they're in covenant with us. They've made that covenant. And we've had people, I remember when we got hooked up with Pastor Godot, I don't like him. I don't like Pastor Godot. I don't like the things you're learning from him. I mean, man, look at this, man. Now you want this honor stuff in the church again. Don't you know honor's been done away with? We don't honor people no more. And I know you got that Timothy scripture, but that's stupid, man. Nobody honors people no more. And ever since you've been hooked up with Pastor Godot, man, people now, they're honoring. Well, I don't like honoring. They left. But they talked about our man of God before that. And I'm like, you better stop while you're ahead. Because you're talking about someone you don't even know personally. And we've stayed in their house. And we know them. And I know some of you guys will say, well, who are you going to choose, them or us? Who are you going to choose? If it came to them or us, well, who would you choose? Who do you think I'm going to choose? Yeah. See, if you're a son or a daughter, you'd be like, you'd be choosing them. Yeah. Because they're the father. They're the, they're the ones up here. And that's the way it should be. Yeah. We, should, we, should, we should fight. Well, I remember, uh, I'll finish with this. Back in Colorado a couple of years ago, we went back there and we were speaking... Uh, back in Colorado, and uh, I'd already, I think I did first service, I don't remember, I think I did first service, and my wife was going to be ministering second service, and so in between the services, there was a guy who, who was there, and he was one of my right-hand guys in youth ministry there, and while he was with us, things were going good and everything else, well, since we had left, I don't know what happened, but some things kind of fell apart in his life, things weren't going all right, I, I, I don't know everything and whatever it was. But I remember, he heard we were going to be there, and, and he wanted to make, he was really hit and miss. But he heard we were going to be there, so he showed up and all that stuff. Well, one of the main reasons why he wanted to show, show up is he wanted to start talking to me about Pastor Steve. So I'm out, and they're getting ready to get into service. I want to get into service. And, and he's like, hey, by the way, I got, I got to just tell you some stuff. 
So he starts going, pew, 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 starts talking, and he starts doing it. And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, you better shut up right now. I told him to shut up. You told him to shut up? Well, I have that relationship with him. I can tell him to shut up. Even though I hadn't seen him for a few years. Yeah, I, I said, no, dude, you better shut up. I said, you don't talk about him like that. I said, I understand he's not perfect. I said, I know him better than you do. I said, I, and, and I can tell you this, since, and you want to know the weirdest thing? Since we have left being their youth pastors, we're closer with them now than we were when I was on staff with them. That's how much our relationship has grown. Yeah. And I said, you better shut up now. And he looks at me and he goes, what? He's just a man like me. He's just a man. And I said, you're exactly right. He's just a man. But I said, he's not just a man. I said, he's the man of this house. And I said, you better keep your mouth off of him. Yeah. And he goes, oh, what are you going to do about it? And, he st and, and there were other people around starting. I said, you better shut up, right? And, I, 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 and I'm like, okay, you want to talk? You want to act like a dummy in front of everybody? I'll put you in your place in front of everybody. And I, I did. I got in his face. You know why? Because he was attacking one of my father's. And he probably didn't like it because he probably thought I would have his back because of everything that happened before. But you don't understand, you, you're attacking this way and that's just not right. And I said, you better stop right now. And, I, and then I just said, I don't need to hear any of this. I said, you are dead wrong. I said, no wonder your life is in shambles. I said, look at your attitude towards the man of God. And I walked away. And I went into service. And I was like, I, I was, I was fuming. Though. I tell you, if I, if I could have popped somebody, I probably would have. <laughs> That's not very Christ-like. Get over it. I know none of you have ever been there. Don't look at me that religious look. But I'm telling you, I did. And I, I, and I'm, but you know, the great thing about it is, is because I was willing to fight for it, he had an attitude adjustment later. Because see, at, at one time, he was a son and for whatever reason, I don't know what came in, got a I don't know, but then he, he turned to an attitude of a servant. So he went from a son to a servant, but then he went back to being a son again. Amen. And he said, he said, thank you for being strong enough to get in my business. He goes, you're the only one that's told me I've been wrong. And he goes, you're, you were right about pastor." And you know what? Since, since things, all of a sudden, things started falling back together in his life, and now he's got a new job and been promoted and all this other kind of stuff. But I can tell you, I was willing to fight for Pastor Steve. Yeah. And I'm willing to fight for any of these guys. Pa Pastor Lowe, uh, he don't need no help. <laughs> if you know Pastor Lowe, yeah. <laughs> that boy's nobody. You don't want to meet that guy in a dark, dark alley. He can handle himself yeah. and then some. But I'm just telling you, if I had to fight for him, even verbally, I would. Do you know why? Because they're, they're up here. Yeah. And there's things they've done in our lives and invested into our lives that we'll fight for. Yeah. And see, we've got to understand, do we have that attitude when it comes to us here? And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not saying if, if we're totally like, you know, drink some Kool-Aid. I'm not saying do that kind of crap. I'm not saying follow us, you know. But I'm saying, you know, you've got to have that right heart. Yeah. Because when you have that right heart, God will bless the sons and let the inheritance come to the sons. Yeah. And all the rewards and all everything to the sons. Because do you remember what happened? Remember when, when, when Noah messed up? And the son that exposed what happened to him. The curse came upon him. For the rest of his life it was horrible. And the blessings came upon those who covered the father. Very good. Okay, i got to stop here. I know I've gone way too long. You guys get anything out of that today? Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you and I praise you for your word. I thank you that your word is the truth. And I thank you that we've had ears to hear and hearts to receive. And, and Lord, if there be anything that I've said that's been wrong or contrary, I thank you that, that people are big enough to understand and, and, and just go with it. But, Lord, help us just to have the right attitude in all that we do for you. That we ultimately realize that we've gone from being your enemy to now being your friends and being your sons and being a part of the family of God and that you share your plans and your purposes with your sons. And so I thank you that we would all just have the right attitude when it comes to you in all that we do. And so this day, Jesus, we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. 
in your mighty name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. All right, well, God is still good. And all the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. You guys ready to give? Pastor Scott and Michelle, thank you for watching Impact Television, a part of the media ministry from Forgiven Church, now in two locations, Bluffton and Fort Wayne, Indiana. Great things continue to happen at Forgiven Church, and we want to give you a special invite to attend one of our life-changing services. Whether you'll be attending church for the first time, haven't been to church in a long time, or maybe you're in transition for a new place to worship, we invite you to a place where we are not perfect, but we know that we are forgiven. For more information, you can go to our website at ForgivenOnline.org. Again, that is ForgivenOnline.org. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you at church.